All right, welcome back everyone to Game Over Cancer Spring 2021. We got ourselves an awesome race coming up right now with Chrono Trigger Jets of Time, and we have ourselves a large ensemble of cast here. So I will take it away to our host and let the introduction start. All right, thank you, Tugboat. Hi, I am Malkreos. I will be your host for the next few hours uh, going on to the end of the night. Uh, I hope that we can have a good time together. We are blazing through these, uh, uh, these donation goals. Uh, we're currently aiming for the final, uh, for the next goal post of $5,500. Let's try to make Streiser and the gang work a little, a little harder and keep having to change that bar. But for now, let's uh, give it away to the Chrono Trigger Jets of Time randomizer crew. Uh, and uh, I will allow them to introduce yourself, themselves. So have a good race, guys. Hey, thanks, Melkurus. Uh My name is Anguirel. I will be one of your commentators tonight for this four-way Jets of Time race. I am joined by the one, the only, Silver Neo. Hello. All right, and it looks like all of our racers are ready, so let me go ahead and start the countdown for them. All right, they now have a countdown screen. We'll be starting in about 10 seconds. Until then, everyone's just uh, sitting on the battle mode select screen. Wait is typically the common battle battle mode chosen for these uh, these runs. It's typically faster. typically is it doesn't make a lot of sense you think hey i don't like waiting why would i go on wait well it's uh it's pretty challenging going on active the enemy's atb bars continue to fill the entire time that you're in menus or choosing your moves so you end up having to spend a lot more turns healing um a lot more turns doing defensive kind of actions rather than being able to deal damage so it, it tends to be slower in the long run to go on active. Yeah, looks uh, like we're starting with uh, Ayla and Magus, so there's a good combination. Yeah, that's a pretty powerful team. We've got pretty good attack power on both sides. Yeah, Magus starts with just generally better equipment than everyone else, um, on top of having a really high speed stat. Actually, both Magus and Ayla have very high speed stats. Um, they don't need to go to end of time to get magic. So they're they're pretty solid characters to have. Magus tends to drop off a little bit more in the late game. Yeah, Magus is only drawback out the beginning is that he doesn't start out with any techs. And it takes him a while to learn his first ones. So you're seeing a pretty standard opening play here. You're actually seeing uh, three of our runners now have gone to desert. They're not going to complete the desert here. They're mostly just going down to, you know, get some of this sweet loot that happens to be hanging around. Uh, this was actually a strategy that Moon Blizzard started doing, and it's kind of caught on in the community. And there you go, like silver earring right off the bat. It, we're getting some pretty decent stuff. I did not actually catch uh, what Janice saw at Snail Stop. So one of the uh, the first key item checks that you'll see a lot of our runners do here is the Snail Stop, uh, where in the vanilla game you would buy the jerky. And in this case, uh, I didn't catch what was there. Now he's all the way up to the tools now. He'll turn that into the carpenter's wife and find another key item here. And it looks like Gatekey was at Snail Stop? Ah, yes. That's a good find. That's a really nice early find. Right, that gives us access metal. to prehistory and the end of time. Yeah, and why that's so important, uh, not so much with the current team they've got now, but uh, meeting Specchio is still required to unlock magic for uh, Chrono, Marl, Ayla, and or sorry, Chrono, Marl, Luca, and Frog. So if they're going to go with either of, or any of those characters for this run, they're definitely going to want magic, unless they just rolled absolutely amazing techs. 
It would be interesting to see if they find Robo at Cathedral and see where the rest of the seed takes him from there. That would be Robo, of course, being the other character that doesn't need magic. So for those not familiar with the randomizer, maybe we should talk a little bit just about what Jets of Time is. Uh, so Jets of Time is an open world Chrono Trigger randomizer. Uh, as you notice, you start off with the epic, you start off with two characters. Uh, there are, they, you've already seen a couple of different checks, Carpenters, uh, Tools check, the Snail Stop check, and at each of these checks you have a chance for a key item. Key items are randomized across 15 different locations, there are 15 key items. Uh, and the ultimate goal is to get the right combination of key items to fight the end boss, which can be a different boss depending on the flag set, but uh, with this flag set will either be Lavos through the Ocean Palace or Zeal 2 at the end of Black Omen. Right, and as you said, the players will start with with Epoch, and they have access to 600 AD. The rest of the eras need to be unlocked. Uh, key items are randomized throughout the game with a certain logic, and they're all behind most bosses. Your chests, your drops, your charm pool, and the order of texts of which they're learned are all randomized. And in the randomizer, you get three texts before having to go to Specchio, uh, besides Ayla, Robo, and Magus. Yeah, exactly. So we're uh, seeing Janus make the cathedral play. So here he will, after beating up the four Naga Ets, uh, he'll find himself a character. Um, Did Janus go to the market and do that little fight there before he went into cathedral? I don't actually know. Oh, I, I, I uh, just missed Janus uh, is they, my mistake. Correct. Uh, we see Moon Blizzard doing the hero metal check. Yeah, so the hero metal, uh, in addition to being an equipable item for Frog, will grant you access to the glowing chest in the left portion of Frog's burrow, and we have a vanilla frog. And we have Luca at the cathedral. Ooh. It's always great, depending on the first tech that they start with. Oh, man. So we just saw a pendant at Frog's Burrow. This seat is wide open. And if you don't mind, uh, if I step in for a moment with all this good news that we found in the seat, I've got some more good news. We received a wonderful $100 donation from MH Zoda Thank with the message of exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. Thank you very much for the support. Uh, we're nearing closer and closer to our current goal. And if you want to take a look at the current incentives, uh, we've got one final incentive left um, between choosing the character for the Great Circus Mystery, starring Mickey and Minnie. Just let me know in chat and uh, we'll make sure that we apply it in the right direction. Awesome. Yeah, great donation. Thank you. So I'm really curious to see what routing decisions we're going to see here. At this point, we have, we know where the pendant is, we know where the gate key is. That opens both prehistory and future. Uh, There's going to be some route divergence and I can't wait to see it. Yeah, this seed really is absolutely wide open at this point. And I am with Kelmer. I am hoping for some crazy divergence. It's always fun to see. I mean, everybody's going to go to Cathedral right off the bat. That, that, that's just a mainstay. From there on, it's anyone's game. For sure, for sure. Now, I'm going to be curious at this point to see if anyone just nopes out of Cathedral after getting Luca. So, you don't get a key item for completing the Cathedral. Uh, after you beat Yakura, you go back to the 680 Guardia Castle, and you go upstairs on the Queen's Tower, and you can find uh, another character. 
So what you'll see some runners do occasionally if they're happy with the team they've got, uh, they might come in, loot a couple of chests in here, and then decide, you know what? I really don't need to worry about this. I'm strong enough. Uh, this is a good team. And they'll just, you know, leave immediately. And take, in this point, or in this case, they'd be taking a small risk. Um, if Robo is in the castle, then that means if they have to do desert, if desert is actually logically required, they'd have to come back uh, and get Robo later. But if they're gambling that desert is not required, then it could save them some time not going through cathedral. That that's a risk. And I think it's one that we're seeing Procky take. Oh, the first divergence. I love it. Oh, what are we gonna get from the chef? So one of the other key item checks here, after you speak to the knight captain on, Den or on the uh, the bridge, the Xenon bridge, uh, and then talk to his brother, the chef. Oh, we have a Chrono Trigger. Oh. Is he going to keep it or reset? Uh, I'm gonna He's keeping it. Thing. This could be interesting. There's also the chance of some decent drops along this bridge. That is true. Ozzy does tend to drop some decent loot. Uh, it is rare, but you occasionally see something as nice even as Prism Specs drop off of Ozzy. Uh, I have seen it. For the runner's sake, I hope we see Prism Specs or something similarly good. Um, could make for an interesting run. Or if you want this run to be pure torment, we could hope for something not so good. You know, like as jerky the, or tools. Uh, as the chef cooked up a Chrono Trigger, Chalk Bob cooked up a donation of $5.49 saying, I was tired of the single decimal point. Now I've fixed the problem. You're welcome, Azuma. I've hidden your shame. Leaving us with a total of $5,303.69. Nice. Much appreciated. Uh, looks like, uh, was that an Aeon Helm and a Kaiser Arm? Oh, that's not bad. You get a couple of those, a couple of Kaiser Arms to sell. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, if they end up running with Robo, that's not a bad weapon. Uh, if not, well, that's just money for the shop later. Oh, Sunshades from Yakra! Okay, that's nice. Uh, it's sunshades. a 25% increase to all damage. Exactly. Yeah, that'll be really handy. So they've already got a pretty powerful team. Uh, Ayla with the highest physical attack uh, in the game, and Luca and Magus both with incredibly strong magic attacks. Uh, who do you put it on? Probably Ayla at this point. Well, Probably that's not, my right? personal preference. Maybe switch it over to Luca when she gets some uh, high-powered fire techs. Now, you see, there's a question when you come across the magic seal. Ooh. Sunshades Robo. or magic seal? Ooh. Yeah, Janice just found Robo. So that was the uh, situation we were talking about earlier. Robo unlocks the desert check. So with uh, Procky and uh, I think, did Moon Blizzard also nope out a Cathedral? So with the two of them skipping Cathedral, if Desert is required, they're going to have to go back. And with Robo being found as so early, it usually means Desert's going to hold something necessary, progression at some point. It frequently does, and it looks like Luca already has Flare. That is... that is incredible. So with the tech randomizer, sometimes uh, you end up with the really powerful techs early. Um, in this case, she has enough MP to cast it once. 
Yeah, but a lot of times you only need to cast it once early on. You know that's not wrong. And if Ailey ends up with triple kick, you got blaze kick going? Uh, that, I think that's fire two for blaze kick, but... Is it? Yeah, still, you're yeah. probably right. Oh man, could you imagine a blaze kick with uh, flare being the second component? That... I don't think that would be legal. I just thought with how strong it already was, it would require flare, not fire two. Fair. Fair. Blaze kick is easily one of the strongest double techs in the game. All right, so we have uh, Procky just finishing the bridge. Uh, Janice Zeal just starting the bridge. Cthulhu is up against uh, Yakra. And Moon Blizzard seems to be going through Hecran Cave. Yeah, it looks like uh, Cthulhu is about to get the good news about the uh, Sunshades. Oh, Janice opting for a uh, AoE magic strat to take out the skeletons. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. Um, you can kill the skeletons. They're weak to magic. They're pretty strong against physical, so that can be a little annoying. You can also hit Ozzy three times, and that will uh, end his spell and end the fight. Uh, Janice opting on that first fight, at least for chucking a uh, napalm and just wiping out the skeletons quickly. Yeah, with this pincher attack, though, they're probably just going to go for Ozzy. Yeah, for sure. That's a more solid bet, unless you have something like a Fire 2 or Ice 2. And Procky just found the Pendant there at the Frog Check. So, Procky is uh, one item away from Go Mode. <laughs> So he's looking for that clone. So uh, Jets of Time has uh, a couple of different go mode variants. Uh, you know, the one I was just referring to is uh, going through Black Omen and defeating Zeal 2. For that, you need the Pendant for future access. The clone and the Chrono Trigger will get you onto Death Peak. That will summon the Black Omen, and then you work your way through there. Correct, um, and then we have a uh, Dreamstone, Ruby Knife, and Gate Key going through Tyrano Layer. That'll get you to the end there. To work another process. Mm hmm. And you want to talk about our, uh, our third way as well? Our third way uh, would be probably the one I've seen the least would be uh, Mass Immune, Frog, and Hero Metal. And that's going through Magus Castle and Ocean Palace. Uh, so you don't actually need the hero medal for that one, just the uh, the Masamune reforged with Frog and uh, the Ruby Knife. Ah, okay. I shall make the correction. I always thought the hero medal was required at some point there. Uh, you you need it in Because vanilla. you have to get Frog, right? Yeah, yeah, Frog, you get him with the, the reforged sword uh, in here. You need the hero medal for the story purpose in vanilla, though that's the need for that's been removed in the randomizer. But with Frog being a vanilla frog, you would still need a hero metal to attain them, right? That uh, care. Just, just the sword. Okay. All right, Janice, handily taking down the bridge. See, even as much as I'm playing Jets of Time, I'm still learning. <laughs> it's a never-ending process. Good there's so much nuance so many little things that you pick up i mean people who have been playing for years every now and then they'll still find something out oh i never knew that now i've got to admit uh now i have been out of practice with my chrono trigger jets of time but i was on the same page as silver neo with frog being at the vanilla frog check you need the hero metal to be able to recruit them so in this particular seed the hero medal would be required to make the climb. Is that not correct? Uh, so the hero medal, the only thing it unlocks in the randomizer is that uh, treasure chest on the left side of the burrow. Oh, it's not the character. Right. 
uh, the character oh. is purely locked behind uh, the two halves of the Masamune being reforged. Now, in this case, Hero Metal is potentially required because it's future access. Uh, the pendant is locked in that chest. Perfect. Thanks for clearing that up. Yeah, not a problem. Actually, maybe another question for our viewers. Uh, well, first of all, thank you, uh, Lady Drakanor, for the raid. Um, raid hype? People people might be quite uh, wondering what the standard race flags, uh, what does that NGSD, ZPTE, or NZZT for short, what does that really mean? All right, uh, Neo, you want to take this one? Um, I'm still learning all the flags. I know the Z flag is for Azeal 2. That opens the ending of the game uh, by defeating Zeal. Uh, N is no glitches. Uh, so N is the, the normal difficulty. So we've got, uh, starting from the left in there, we've got normal difficulty, uh, disabled glitches. That disables things like the uh, save anywhere glitch, um, the unequip glitch. We've got uh, fast overworld movement, fast menu inputs. Those are your S and D. Your Z is your flag that makes Zeal 2 a final boss. Uh, P is early pendant charge. So normally in the vanilla game, or without the P flag, you'd have to go to the Kingdom of Zeal, talk to the Mammon machine, and charge up your pendant before you can open sealed chests. With the fast pendant charge flag, as soon as you take the portal to the future, as soon as you finish the trial, beat the dragon tank, and portal to the future, uh, your pendant activates, and you can start going around getting all those sealed doors and sealed chests. Uh, and then the TE is the tech randomizer. And that is the, the standard race flags that are typically used for uh, races in Jets of Time. And another raid from, from Kenshin Track. Thank you very much, Kenshin, being a racer from uh, earlier in the day with the uh, Super Castlevania 4 race. Put on a great show. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. As you can see, we are nearing our next goal post. If, uh, if anybody wants to help us reach that and make the organizers do some work to push it back, please follow the links available on uh, in the chat to place your donations. Yeah, welcome. Welcome, everyone. So it looks like Janice just went and unlocked magic and got uh, access to prehistory. We've got Moon Blizzard making the run through the uh, trial sequence. He's heading to the future. Uh, Procky working through Hecarin Cave and Cthulhu uh, after grabbing the Chrono Trigger served up by the Guardia Castle chef is now working on finishing off Zombor. And we have Kelmer in chat with the free Fritz hashtag. I am yes. so against green Fritz. You monster. <laughs> He's the mid smuggler. He's supposed to be in jail. We can't free him. Look, those goods fell off the back of a truck and you know it. Uh, so Fritz, uh, Fritz is a little bit of a contentious one in the community. So... Uh, he runs a, a mid ether smuggling ring, apparently, and if you save Fritz, you get to go visit uh, his shop in 1000 AD with Chrono, and you will be given 10 mid ethers. Uh, if you don't need the magic restoring items, or if you don't have Chrono, well, it's a little bit of a waste of time, but I always like to, you know, save Fritz just to, you know, one good turn deserves another, I think. I mean, that's what, 20,000 gold? You don't think that's a little shady? Uh, hey, I'm getting ethers. I'm okay with this. Oh, and Ayla goes down on Procky's stream. Ayla taking a dirt nap. Just as Dragon Tank comes out for Moon Blizzard. Janus takes down Hecron. Or at least... Uh, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, Janus uh, making their way towards Akron. Not quite there yet. So, Hecarin's Cave Check is a little bit interesting. Uh, rather than getting your key item from Hecarin directly, uh, you pop out of the Whirlpool, head down to Luca's house, and get a Toma's Pop. He'll have a second item for you when you create the Sunstone. Yes, uh, it won't be a key item, but Tabin will give you a potentially high tier item for the Sunstone as well as for reforging the Masamune. So there's three items you can get from him? There are three. One key item and two high tier items. That I did not know. Yeah, that one's a little obscure. Um, a lot of people will just check Tabin the one time on the way through but you can get some nice gear off them. Hey, when you can't find that rainbow anywhere else... Yeah, one... Or in this case, Wondershot. Yeah. One thing I've never seen any runners check, but uh, I don't think I ever will. The Ioka Trading Hut in uh, prehistory those items have also been randomized and can be pretty high tier if you go for the uh, the big top level one that you... I forget how many items it is for the trade, but it's quite a few. Just one of those things that most people probably don't even realize is randomized because it takes so long no one ever does it, but could be good gear. Now here's a good question because Ayla's in the party. Is the charm pool different from the... Um drops that you could get from each specific enemy. Uh, so... Yes. Each enemy has a drop slot and a charm slot. Now, if you charm twice, um, you can get the drop item as a charm as well. So you can get a second copy of that. In the, in the vanilla game, that would be considered a rare charm. Um, so you can occasionally get it on the first charm as well, but by charming twice you get the charm item and the drop item, and then you beat the enemy and get the drop item again. And yes, all charms and drops are uh, randomized. Alright, it looks like uh, Moon Blizzards are first to the future. And there we have Janus going up against Hecran. I don't really see anyone pulling out far enough ahead to really say who's in front yet. No, this is... The seed is so wide open from uh, an early pendant and an early gate key that it's really like, impossible to say who's ahead right now. And this is that route divergence we were talking about. Everyone is in different spots. Yeah, we've got four runners all in different time periods. Uh, I guess Procky and Janice are both in 1000. And yep, sadly, uh... It looks like no one's saving Fritz today. Yeah, Moon is pulling... Uh, he's just started doing this recently. It's a, a new strategy of his where he pops in and checks the first couple items in... Uh, the first item in Lab 16, the first item in Lab 32, and typically the first item in Sewers. Um, they're not too far out of the way, and you can potentially get some, some decent gear from it. Yeah, I'm not sure what tier those are. I would have to look it up. I'm not sure off the top of my head, but they they can be pretty good stuff. Yeah, and Cthulhu is either fishing for the secret room here in Reptite Lair, or he might just be grinding a couple of levels out. Um, so, for those who may not be aware, these uh, evil weevils that wander around here in Reptite Lair will occasionally start to dig, and 
when they dig a tunnel, if it's in the right spot, uh, you can actually go through their tunnel instead of the, the default one in the room there and go down a back way that has some extremely high tier chests. Uh, we're talking like some of the highest tier chests in the game in those hidden tunnels. It's a little bit of a gamble because there's no guarantee that Evil Weevil will dig or if they dig that they'll dig in the right spot. But if you get lucky, it's very nice gear. Right. And if I'm really going for that, I'll just keep walking in and out of the room. If they're not digging within the first five or six seconds, walk out, walk back in, and repeat. Yeah, that's that's a great strategy for it. Just go fishing for digs. Alright, Cthulhu's about to get the news about the uh, early pendant. We've got Moon Blizzard at Sun of Sun already. And Dragon Tank going down for Procky just as Janice enters the prison sequence. And this is almost uh, tough to follow with all the runners in such different areas. I'm kind of liking this. Right, I agree. This is this is great. Yeah, I see a question in chat about the damage. Uh, I was not actually paying enough attention to notice. Uh, if it was on Dragon Tank, it's possible that some of the numbers overlapped because you've got the body and the wheels together. Um, quad nines would very much surprise me. Yeah, that would be extremely unlikely this point into the game. I don't think I've seen quad nines yet in any Chits of Time seeds that I've played. The highest I've I'm gone is like 6,500. I've got to say, I just saw it now. It did 9,984 to Son of Sun to one of the uh, the flames. Interesting. 9, oh, you know what that is? That's, um... Yeah, Zelfer's explaining it in chat. That's the Gradius. Um, the Gradius deals damage based on uh, HP percentage, and those flames have some absurdly high amount of HP. 30,000. So, yeah, so it'll just look like, you know, max damage, though you really can't kill them. I only know yeah. that because I've literally looked it up to see if it was possible to kill one of those flames, just to make the fight a little easier. Uh, fun fact, you can actually get rid of some of the flames with uh, Magus's Black Hole spell. And it looks like Robo Ribbon was found at Sun of Sun. Yeah, which doesn't entirely help since Moon skipped Robo, who is still sitting locked in a, you know, time loop or something in Guardia Castle. And we have Marl found um, at the uh, Dome Before Factory. Yeah, sadly we won't be seeing Factory today. Um, so factory is one of the paths to the end of time so if you get an early pendant uh you don't have a gate key and you want to unlock magic uh you will frequently go through left side factory turn power back on at the dome and you can take the portal to end of time uh, since our runners have the gate key we're not going to be seeing that play today right and phil Farron is correct there in chat that means chrono is at dactyl's nest Yes, that is true. I imagine uh, our runners will be skipping Dactyl Nest. I have the same thought. I imagine they will also be skipping Frog. Uh, in fact, they're probably quite happy with their current party. I don't know. If they find both pieces of the Mass Immune, 
before they find any other go mode items? Uh, it's... Hmm. It's it possible. It is possible. I'd say this far into the seed, uh, they're probably more likely to do a couple other of the quick checks before they try and uh, pull the Magus Castle route, especially since they still need the Ruby Knife. I mean, I do know three of the runners are just a clone away from Go Mode, but still, that clone could be locked behind them. Geno Dome, which you're not going to see any of the runners go to. Biting my tongue. Yeah, Geno Dome is uh, it's a little bit of a risky play. Uh, higher level monsters, so you can get a lot of experience, a lot of tech points, a lot of gear there. But it's also not the quickest check. So a lot of runners will tend to leave that until later. Um, every now and then, though, you'll see someone pull a, a Geno Dome early play and it'll you know, really pay off for them. Uh, Zelfer actually recently did that in one of his races. Right, right. we're talking about you, Zelfer. Yeah, yeah, you, you know who I'm talking about. You know what you did, Zelfer. That was an epic race, by the way. That race was amazing. All right, we have Son of Sun going down and Guardian going down at the same time. Uh, Hecarin just starting up, and Janus is now onto the uh, the looting phase after getting the charged pendant. I'm just going to take a quick moment here to thank Benjas S4 for the raid. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, thanks for joining us all. I'm also going to thank Matthew for the six dollar donation, six dollar Canadian donation uh, through the GOC website, as well as Thomas's five dollar donation through the GOC website. Thanks everybody. Thanks everybody joining us. As you can see, we're less than two hundred dollars from our next goal. Uh, it's you know, for with the amount of people we have in chat right now, that's the price of a coffee each, or if the price of one coffee from Starbucks. So, just saying, we're really close. We are almost there. I can't wait to see if we can hit that before the end of this seed. Runners are starting to converge a bit here on the future. I'm sorry, I gotta say Moon's just a little behind not having that Colonel Trigger. And like Felfarin says, if they find Clone here... Yeah, uh, I'm trying to remember, where was the Corona Trigger? That was the Chef? Correct, that was Zombor. Right, that was the Chef item. Uh, Xenon Bridge will be kind of a joke at this stage of the game with this power level, but it is still, still time. Right. That, no matter what your level is, it's going to be a couple of minutes going through the three fights just to get to the boss. Oh yeah, yeah. Though it will, the Zombor kill itself will be much faster than, uh, yeah, you know, when the other runners did it right after Cathedral. All right, we got Cthulhu going to be joining the others in the future. Now we'll see what was behind Guardian. All right, Doan, what do you have for us? Oh, I think I called that. Yeah, the that probably does not make our runners happy. So the hilt is one half of the Masamune. You need the hilt and the blade. Uh, when combined, you go to Melchior, get them reforged, and that will grant you access to the character in Frog's Burrow. It also, if you have Frog, um, lets you cut a mountain in half to get to Magus's castle. And I agree with Kelmer, this keeps the race going. That it does. 
I'm I'm not unhappy about this. And no, there is not yet a clear lead. No, it really just depends on what they find. It has been mentioned if Procky finds clone. Uh, same thing with uh, Janazeel. If they find clone, they're go mode. Uh, at this point, Moon does not have the Chrono Trigger. He skipped Xenon Bridge. So uh, if Clone is somewhere that everyone else checks, uh, that'll actually put him a little behind. I honestly think Procky and Moon are about at the same. They pulled a little ahead of the other two runners, but not by much. If I had to actually choose... Yeah, such a tough call, though. This whole thing could swing towards any of the runners at this point. Right, one key item, and that changes completely. Oh, Moon Blizzard turning in that Naga at Bromide. So, in Vanilla, you turn in the Naga at Bromide to the old man in uh, Sandorino Village there. If you uh, do it in the Randomizer, you actually get a better reward. So in vanilla, you get a magic tab. In the randomizer, you get one of each tab, speed, magic, and power. And the speed tab alone makes it pretty worth it. And it does look like Moon's going for Denodoro. Yeah, I love these Berserker strats from Cthulhu. You know, Berserk Ayla running through the prison. Now, the, does that Berserker up the speed a little bit, too? Ah, uh, you know, I'm not actually sure. I'm, I'm wondering if it doesn't up the speed, but the inputs are faster than so what you could manually put in. That is very possible. Uh, I know it ups your attack power. So it might have just been to be absolutely certain that Ayla's attacks would, uh, you know, one-shot the guards. Yeah, correct. With Chokosora there, instant inputs. Ooh, does Ayla have triple kick already? I have not noticed. Kelmer says third tech. Oh, beautiful. So now we're looking for fire two. Uh, once we get fire two and triple kick, that's blaze kick. That's your strongest single target dual tech in the game. But does it compare to doing a flare and a triple kick? You know, that's a good question. Uh, in that situation, I'd probably say go for the, uh, the the techs individually, though in some cases you want that single target damage like on a Lavo spawn or uh, something like Zeal 2 where you don't want to hit everything on screen. Right, and if you're going at this as fast as you can, you may be looking at uh, MP consumption and doing them separately would cost more MP. So you'd yes. be going through more ethers or more mid ethers. Yeah, that's for sure. And we got a rat chase on the Janus side. Oh, and there's that beautiful skip on Moon Blizzard screen. The only one I cannot pull off. Yeah, I've never tried the one he does. He goes on that lower section of the ramp. Uh, the one I've always done, and the one I've usually seen done, is on the upper part of the ramp. You know, I've tried them both, and I just can't get them. But I can get other skips that Moon has trouble with. The positioning on that one is a little bit finicky. Yeah, Silver I'm just trying rock. to figure it out at this point. Ooh, Silver Rock. I don't think we're going to be seeing that today, but good to you know they got it. You don't see many seeds where they'll actually use the rocks. Not too often. Uh, and when they do, it usually is just 
pure luck that you happen to have the right team. I think it's more that you can find a better accessory to have on the particular character. Uh, frequently it's that. Uh, also just it's so uncommon to not only have the right rock and also have the right team and all the right techs all unlocked at the same time. Though when you do get them, you say like a blue rock or a black rock, and you have the right team for it, oh, it it's a thing of beauty. I love that, just one-shotting uh, the split Masa and Mune fight. Absolutely. No needing to hypno-wave. Yeah, another early vanilla way to take that fight easily is to use Hypno Wave from Luca. That way they don't do a counterattack if you just focus on either Massa or me. Right, both of them have to be unaffected by status in order to counterattack because it's a dual dual counter. So yeah, like you're saying, Hypno Wave is a great strat for that. Now we got Procky and Moon doing pretty much the same fight at this point. Yeah, Janice, uh, just getting the news about, uh, Aristome. And I'm guessing we're probably going to be seeing, is C did Cthulhu do Aristome, or just, Cthulhu just got to the future, right? Yes. Okay, so Cthulhu will probably be doing Aristome shortly. And yeah, I don't think either runner actually talked to the Kilwalla in the mountains, so... So far, we are left uh, without mountains are nice. Yeah, Moon was talking about that in one of his last streams, that it just takes too much time and it's not worth it. Yeah, it's a single magic tab. Uh, magic... Of course, the magic tabs are going to scale differently with the different spells. The stronger the spell, the more damage you get per magic point, uh, or magic power point. So I think we estimated for Flare, it's something like 40 or 50 damage before magic defense is taken into account. So it ends up not really being all that much. And we got Strazer going through desert now. Oh, we're seeing the desert play. And we got Moonstone. Oh, Janus. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think this is going to be our first look at the desert. So, at least at what key item is here at the desert. Yeah, if you want to check. So we'll see if that early robo pulled off. Yeah, Moon's doing the uh, the Guardia Castle chef check now, going to Xenon Bridge, so he's going to get himself a Chrono Trigger. I assume he'll be keeping that. I love that hit. they're making light of my incorrectness. Hey, you know what? Uh, for the next one of these, I think we need to have Streiser as one of the racers. I agree. I'll race with you, Streiser. Let's go. <laughs> Plot twist. Streiser enters late and wins. Could happen. Oh, Procky's uh, fishing for a dig, but no such luck. You can see that chest on the right-hand side in that, that next room over. You know, and every one of those chests you don't open is a prism specs. Oh, I am so interested to find out what this Fiona check is. If it's clone? If it's clone, then Janus just takes a massive lead, I would say, at this point. Very much so. Yeah, 
Yeah, we actually, uh, again, we had all runners in different time periods at the same time again. Uh, the divergence in this is just crazy. Uh, fun fact, the shop, the, that second nun on the right-hand side in here is guaranteed to sell Lapis. Uh, there are two shops in the game that are guaranteed to sell Lapis. Uh, there's this one and Fritz's shop. So that would be another reason to save Fritz. In addition to his mid-ether smuggling ring, he also uh, runs a Lapis ring. And we got Dreamstone at Fiona Check. Oh, wow. So that opens Mount Woe. That does. So we're looking at one item from Go Mode uh, in two different ways. Actually, three. So... No, no, I guess not the Magus Castle. You still need the Ruby Knife for that. And if they get Ruby Knife, they're not going through Magus Castle. If you go through Magus Castle, you don't need the Ruby Knife because it... Um, the game actually tells you that it opens up the seal behind Zeal. Uh, that's actually a beta feature, so uh, that will oh, be... Okay. When, the, when the beta comes out, that's going to be one of the changes. Uh, as of the current release, uh, you still need the Ruby Knife. I'm sorry, spoilers! Yeah, spoiler alert! <laughs> uh, for anyone who is a, a Jets of Time player, there is a beta right now that is just about wrapping up so i think once the tournament's over we're looking to release lots of fun new features so uh if you if it's been a while since you've played and you want to check out some new stuff some new features uh, highly recommend it coming soon do we do we want to tell them what upcoming features may happen after the tournament's over uh i was gonna say we can wait until the actual release but sure if you wanted to mention some of the new stuff Oh, it's so good, I can't help myself. A frog gets some amazing updates. Um, it's like, um, if you go through and upgrade the mass immune, he gets extra power, extra speed, I'm making him an amazing character. Uh, just like that, uh, what I was just talking about, how it opens up behind Zeal. Uh, what 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 else has changed in the uh, beta? There's just some quality of life fixes. There's a few bug fixes that have gone into it as well. Um, the frog buffs are pretty nice. Uh, the uh, Masamune 2, the upgraded Masamune, becomes a, a key item drop. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where did we find the ruby knife? I was talking and I wasn't paying attention. Where was that at? Oh, uh, that's a good question. I wasn't looking. Seth here, where was that ruby knife at? Reptite, Reptite layer. Reptite layer. Oh! Alright, so Janice uh, is about to hit go mode then after the next boss fight. Yeah, so we're going to be looking at our first go mode once uh, Nisbel goes down. Procky may hit go mode just at the same point, though. Um... Wasn't it Dreamstone behind Mass Immune? Dreamstone was in uh, the Desert Check. You're right. You're right. So, yeah, Robo's in uh, the castle in 600 AD. Oh... I'm guessing Janice just pulled ahead. Uh, yeah. Yeah, unless, um... Unless someone maybe finds Clone, like, imminently. So it looks like we've got, uh, Moon Blizzard running through Giant's Claw. That's a check we haven't seen yet. He's hoping that Thomas Pop came with some progression. I can't blame him. I can't either. And Procky is going through Cathedral now in order to probably find Robo at the end. 
Oh, that's pretty funny that, uh, just the way the paths are starting to converge now. Now, remember, there's still still some fetch quests out there. Uh, we've got the uh, Moonstone, we've got the Prism Shard, those haven't been found yet. Uh, those also unlock checks in Guardia Castle 1000 AD related to the King's Trial and the Treasury. Moon Blizzard um, did find the Moonstone. He did. Uh, we've also got Jerky available still. Jerky is uh, just a high tier item that you can turn it in for, but it doesn't actually lead to any progression. So we could... Uh, tools. Tools are another item we haven't found yet. So lots of fetch quests or semi-dead checks that uh, are still out there. Right. So. There could be some fetch quests before we actually find an actual go mode here. Yep. Man, look how fast Cathedral's going down, though, now that our runners actually have uh, Tier 2 spells. It's almost as if Procky knows Robo is back there. Yeah, honestly, at this point, you just have to start wondering. Like, he's... He knows where Frog is, so he knows this has to be where Robo is. And if Robo's been available here this whole time, then Desert's a pretty solid play. I think he realizes it's only a 50-50 chance between there and Dactyl Nest at this point. Uh, I think Procky actually did Dactyl Nest. Did he? Yeah, Chrono right there. So yeah, he and knows that has to be Robo then. We got Son of Sun and... Uh... Rust Tyranno both going down at the same time. And what's going to be behind Rust Tyranno? If it oh, it's oh, a jerky, jerky. I was almost hoping for the other part of the mass immune, so that we can see um, separate go modes. Yeah, I mean, we still, uh, depending on where that clone is hiding. We still may see um, at least one of our runners going Black Omen and another going Ocean Palace. And Moon Blizzard's going to turn into Jerky. Let's see if this pays off. You end up yeah. with some Moon Armor at the end of that. Or Nova Armor? You're good. Yeah, that's a good find if you can get it. <laughs> or a Wonder Shot. Was that two magic rings out of the uh, the two chests in there? <laughs> I think so. Wow. Yeah, Zelfer, it's probably just another prism specs. Just casually another prism specs. Another? Crisis arm. Yeah, they That's got speed their, belt. Their... Go ahead. That speed belt can end up being amazingly necessary, especially at the end of the game when you really need that 13 speed on at least one of your characters. Oh yeah, you go into uh, Black Omen and you fight some of those laser guards. Uh, if you can't outpace them, I mean, they can wreck your day. Oh yeah, plenty of game overs due to those. Alright, Procky just got himself Robo, and we've got uh, Cthulhu heading into Giant's Claw, and at this point, Janus is in go mode and making the play for Tyranno Lair. So we're about to see a Nisbel 2 fight. Oh, and I think Moon just got the secret tunnel. Nice! Kali Blade, that's less than useful. <laughs> So whether or not that tunnel comes out first or sixth is not seed dependent. It's dependent upon something else. It is purely random. The uh, the evil weevils will just wander around and 
if they happen to feel like digging, they'll dig. It doesn't look like there was anything useful. I've seen a full ether and a Cali blade. Yeah, full ether is not bad. Uh, it's not what you're hoping to see here, but it could come in handy later. Uh, the Cali blade is just going to sit in inventory. I I think you can sell Cali blades. A lot of the high tier stuff you can't sell, so the Cali blade should be sellable. Uh, things that are apt I think it's the Shiva edge god tier. Shiva Edge and Rainbow Slashers. Yeah, so Procky is uh, doing his Retinite fight, so uh, he'll be getting the good news soon about Go Mode. And Cthulhu taking some Rubble fights. Assuming he can hit them, um, I like to call them the Dodging Boulders of Sadness. Uh, he'll get some good tech points for it. Yeah, so uh, in chat, last time Moon got the tunnel, he got Prism Specs. Um, that was actually in his last race. Um, he walked in, they instantly started digging, he hopped down the tunnel, and Prism Specs out of the first chest, I believe. That was that was one of the, uh, the big time savers in the run for him. And Janice lining up that skip, that's a fun one. That's an annoying fight if you hit it, so that skip is pretty clutch. Such an amazing race so far. This has been a good one. By the way, everybody in chat, if you're not uh, following any of our racers here, please g give them a follow. Um, give them a Shout out, throw some emotes in the chat. Let's get some hype here. Yeah, these uh, these four are great runners. Definitely uh, play a fair bit of this game, so put on some, some good shows. Uh, Dreamstone is desert, so Procky's about to get his. And thank you, Nightbot, for putting that out. Yeah, for sure. And Streiser for uh, setting it up for that. Absolutely. So, uh, the Black Tyranno fight is kind of interesting. Uh, it, just like in Vanilla, you uh, take down Azala and then the, the defense gets removed from the Black Tyranno shortly after, and you can damage it. Um, and if you'll remember, there's a countdown in vanilla. You know, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, followed by, like, a fire breath attack. Uh, I don't know if we'll be seeing the attack today. It depends how much damage Janice can put out, but uh, you might be surprised at the attack that you see. I've seen several different attacks come out as random, but you kind of get an idea of what he's going to hit with before he hits with it. So my first ever seed, I got hit with Dark Matter. Uh, that was an instant party wipe. I've been hit with Luminaire. Uh, yes, Luminaire. Um, Hexagon Mist is another possible one. I think Energy Release for a physical attack. So you can get hit with some pretty nasty abilities depending on what the randomizer happens to roll. Uh, Black Tyranno's health is also randomized. There are just a couple of bosses in the game that have a randomized amount of health. Black Tyranno's can be anywhere from 8,000 to 12,000 in multiples of 1,000. And here we go on moon screen, trying to get this, and he gets the skip. All right, nails. It uses the pause buffer to get the, uh, it's two pixels. So you want to walk up next to him, get those two pixels, and then cut, like, cut over two pixels and then up, and you can sort of skip around the fight. I've never used the pause buffer to do it before. I've just uh, done 
done it so many times in vanilla growing up, like in high school, that I just understand what it looks like. Yeah, so I I typically just you know tap the D-pad over until I'm in the right spot. Um, I know Moon plays on a keyboard, so I guess the sensitivity is a little bit different. I did not know he was a keyboard warrior. All right. Yeah. Yeah, he's one of the few racers I am aware of that uses a keyboard. Are we going to have a Geno Dome? It looks like it. Yeah. Yeah, we have a Geno Dome coming in. I wonder if this is going to pay off. For Moon's sake, I hope so. Um, <laughs> for the sake of, you know, this race, I kind of hope so, just because I want to see uh, two different Go modes on screen at the same time. Right. I mean, he, he could end up finding either the clone or the second part of the mass immune. Either way, it's going to bring a different gomer. Yeah. Yeah, Proki uh, missed that skip before Nisbel, but, you know, cleaned it up fast. He's good. Worst case scenario, he finds Prism Shard. Yeah, no kidding. So we uh, also have Janus just finishing up the uh, Black Tyranno fight. That opens up our way to pre, not prehistory, um, the Dark Ages, 12,000 BC. So we're going to get a look at the new shop soon. Yeah, that new shop is two different shops, depending on which direction that you speak to the new in it. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of in vanilla, you normally approach the new, you talk to the, the new in, um, is it Kajar? and uh, you get the message about, oh, I, I have load shields, but I can't sell them unless the queen says so, and then, you know, sells you stuff. Well, now you can walk around to the other side of the counter and get a second shop. Uh, one of those shops is actually guaranteed to sell some pretty nice stuff, and the other is a standard pretty high-tier shop. Yeah, very few seeds have I gone through or I haven't found something I needed at that new. Yeah, um, it is one of two shops in the game guaranteed to sell an amulet. So if you're in a seed that you're just starved for status protection and you know you're going to have to go through Lavos, then uh, those amulets can be nice. Uh, the shop on the right is the standard shop. The shop on top, uh, on the north side of the counter, is the amulet shop. Uh, you can Looks also like find Janus uh, spent his money on some mid ethers. Those are very, very useful. Should have saved Fritz. <laughs> Fritz has got the hookup. Yeah, so the shop, the northern new shop today wasn't terribly great. I mean, there are times you can find like the highest tier weapons, you can find um, mega elixirs. Uh, that shop can roll some very, very good stuff. That was a rather disappointing new shop. So it looks like James is going to go for the Ocean Palace. Yeah. Yeah, we're about to and see some uh, gold action. Honestly, I, I don't like going through the Ocean Palace. I will go for Death Peak if I can attain it in any way, shape, or form. You know, funny you should mention that Ocean Palace used to be the preferred route of most runners. It was generally considered to be a, a faster, more reliable route. Um, and people would actually go out of their way to not do Omen. But as the community has grown, gotten more involved, more people are finding additional skips and additional uh, faster routing options. Uh, Black Omen has become faster. And I agree, because even I've learned a lot of the skips in Omen. There are a few of them I still got to work on, but there are a couple of elevator fights in Ocean Palace that are just so slow. When you have those six eyeball flying things. Oh yeah, the infamous uh, six scouter one where you've got two of each element. Yeah, if you don't have the right moves to take those down quick, that fight can be very, very drawn out. And there's a big trick to taking down that fight. I mean, if you take down 
one of each element and leave one of each element on the other side, they'll start delta forcing you and it could be an easy wipe right there. Yeah, they're pretty nasty. For sure. Sounds like Jets of Time have a, has a few encounters that people should be skipping, but what people shouldn't be skipping on is helping out this wonderful cause of Game Over Cancer, raising money for the Canadian Cancer Society. I completely agree. Let's raise some money. Absolutely. 5,500 in this seed. Come on, people. Yeah, and Moon casually grabbing some more Prism Specs. Thank you, Malcros, for posting that donate link. Golem's down. Janus is going to be entering Ocean Palace. At this point, Janus has a fairly sizable lead. Not insurmountable, uh, but definitely sizable. And of course, Lavos is the great equalizer. Uh, if Lavos decides you're getting a bad pattern and you're going to die, well, you're going to die. <laughs> There's not much you can do about that. I admit, I'm still just really hoping this Genodome play pays off because I want to see uh, Ocean Palace and Omen Go modes going on at the same time. Uh, looks like Cthulhu is actually doing his desert play now, so we're about to have Go mode on Cthulhu's side as well. So we'll have uh, three runners in Go mode. There's a fun little skip you can do here where you can actually power this door without changing the direction of the elevator. I know Proki's talked about it a little bit. Uh, it's incredibly tight timing. It's only a, a few frame window. So not I surprising. Seen, I have seen Proki do it once in one of his seats and <laughs> it blew me away. I never knew it was even possible. Yeah, same. I think Proki's the one who... Uh, actually told me about it but here moon is doing the robot skip to this little wall here yeah this is a fun one uh it kind of lets you skip that whole giant walk around with the robot and he'll just sort of meet you on the other side the uh, only trick is you have to take down those two enemies that are standing right there otherwise that robot runs away yes i've, um, I've, I've made done that, that mistake a couple of times you and me both. So this fight that Janus is doing now is actually one of the most popular grinding locations in the game. Uh, you can keep running up and down these stairs here, uh, as they're doing now, and uh, the, the fight's worth a lot of XP, a lot of tech points, and uh, you're actually seeing right now good items too, so uh, this is one of those fights that is uh, the drops are a little bit bugged for. I think it's the mages? that are guaranteed to drop ethers right now. Um, and it looks like the Thrashers are dropping full tonics, so, you know, good consumables, good experience, good tech points. That is so nice. Yeah, they're going to come they in really handy. Drop the elixirs. I'm sorry, I did not catch that. What's up? If they could only drop the Mega Elixirs, that would make it all the better. Oh, that would be better. Uh, I've had the uh, Eyeballs in uh, Black Omen drop Mega Elixirs before. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yep, yep. Phil Farron there in chat. Pulley pro uh, Procky pulling the Everything Must Go sale. Yeah, hey, if you want something late game, everything else goes. Looks like he was going for the full ethers. They're nice to have. 
especially he's going to be doing the grind fight as well, at least probably a couple of times, so he'll end up with some full tonics to go along with him. So, interestingly enough, uh, Cthulhu is in go mode as well, but it looks like he's opting to do uh, Genodome. I don't know if he's looking for the other go mode, or if he's just looking to use the conveyor belt to grind a little bit before he does uh, Tyranno Lair. I'm not sure, but I, I, I think Procky just sold some of the white vests, which absorb lightning damage, correct? Uh, yeah. That's correct. That's one of the things I hold on to until the end, when, especially if I'm going to fight Zeal 2. I hold on to Dark Helms and White Vests. Makes that yeah. a cheese fight. I don't think he's going through Zeal, but they definitely do help with Golems. Alright, everybody's in go mode here. Yeah, wow. Genodome actually uh, paying off. So I would, clone. Still, I would still say that uh, Janus Zeal has a, uh, a lead at this point. They're getting pretty close, already a decent chunk of the way through Ocean Palace. Uh, Proki just starting Ocean Palace. And Moon still has to do both Death Peak and Black Omen. I would say it's down to Janus and Moon at this point in time. Janus has the levels. He's pretty good there, sitting at 29 and 28. But Moon can go through these next two spots so quick. Moon is kind of terrifying at uh, the Death Peak Black Omen combo. He's terrifying at all the end game stuff because he just flies through it. Uh, the the funniest part watching Moon and all of our racers are, are good, so you'll see it on a lot of their their screens. But um, Moon in particular has done some skip guides and videos for a lot of these dungeons. And if you didn't know there were encounters in some of these dungeons, you would just think you were out taking a walk. He just runs through rooms where I would get into four or five encounters, and he doesn't get any. Oh no, wow, he grabbed the power tap and got behind the tree. That takes That's, timing. That does. That's some solid motion right there. There's a fight coming up. So we so talked it's about... very hard that. to skip. Right yeah. here on the next screen, this one. Oh, and he gets it. Wow. So you see Janus, they're setting up for the um, the Dino Tail strats on the elevator. So we talked a little before about how the elevator here can be kind of annoying uh, with the scouters, because they have such high physical defense. Um, and if you hit them with the wrong element, uh, they'll counterattack. If you hit them with an AoE, they'll delta attack. So what a lot of runners will do if they have Frog or Ayla, they'll stand in front of that statue, damage down their, their Frog or their Ayla, and then use either Dino Tail or Frog Squash to just sort of cheese the elevator. And it has to do at least 250 damage? Uh, 200, I believe. Also, there goes Moon with another set of shades. <laughs> I swear, Moon's like a Sunshade and Prism Spec magnet. At this point, I think Moon has more shades and specs than he can possibly equip. We got Cthulhu running through Geno Dome. He'll find the clone at the end of that. We got Procky yeah. there in Ocean Palace. So I'm a little surprised Cthulhu is doing the entire uh, Geno Dome. I was thinking he might just be trying to grab some levels off the conveyor, but uh, it looks like he's probably just more comfortable with the Black Omen route. Uh, and sort of fishing for that second go mode. Now, we all know that this is going to pay off, so looking forward to see which one he chooses.
There's that blaze kick on Moon Blizzard. Yeah, look at that damage. 3,500. Lava spawn doesn't stand a chance. I remember running through vanilla and having so much trouble with that lava spawn and then seeing that happen. Oi. Yeah, that Lobo spawn is a little bit of a brick wall, for at least for me when I was doing my vanilla playthrough. It hit way harder than I was expecting. Alright, that was a fast death peak. Oh no, it looks like Ayla went down on uh, Janice's heel side. Oh no, that could bring the whole technique down. Unless you can get that flare off. Yeah, do they have revives? So the flare, you're still gonna leave that scouter up. I'm sorry, correction. Unless they can get that flare off. Oh no! <laughs> okay, that counter wasn't as bad as I thought. Okay. okay there it is, okay. And I think Ayla will come back with one health for the next fight, which I believe is the dreaded six scouter fight. There is, is there any menu glitch you can get between these fights? Uh, I don't think there's a menu glitch, but uh, you come back with one health after combat. Here was the dreaded fight. Dead. I, I, oh. oh, and the dino tail. Perfect. Yeah, that was clutch. <laughs> one health Ayla, so it's going to do max damage too. I wonder if they meant to do that. Um, you, you gotta think. Probably not. That, that, <laughs> that, that may have been meant to happen. So, I mean, we'll, we'll claim yes, but uh, they'd, they'd already done the uh, the damage down strat with the statue, so I think that was just uh, yeah, just a tense moment there. Exactly, Kelmer. All all planned unless exactly. otherwise stated. Oh, got the, the skip on the way in, but caught the scouters on the way out. The nice thing is you can just run from these fights if you don't want them. At this point, it's good experience, though. Uh, yeah, I don't think they're worried too much about levels, though, with, uh, like, level 28, 29 before the elevator on that staircase grind. Yeah, they're pretty well set. So, Procky gonna... Looks like, uh, he's also taking a couple of grind fights on the stairs here to set up for that final run. And we're about to see the uh, the Golem Twins. So right now we're looking at two different Go Mode endings. We've got Moon Blizzard going through Black Omen, and we got Procky and Janus going through Ocean Palace. And Cthulhu is going to be finishing up his uh, Genodome in the near future. Just got to deliver this robot, head upstairs, and fight the boss. Now, what strat is Janus going to use against the Golem Twins? That's a good question. I was not actually paying attention to their equipment setup. Um, Golem Twins will respond in kind with the elements that you hit them with. If you hit them with physical, they will do physical. If you hit them with shadow, they will do shadow, and so on. So the easiest way to cheese this fight is equip a bunch of elemental armor that absorbs a particular element and just make sure you always end your attack pattern on that element and they'll heal you instead of hurting you. Um, I didn't get a good look at what Janice was using for equipment. 
It looks like 50% fire damage. Luca has absorbed 50% fire damage. Yeah, the other big option uh, is you can alternate between, I believe it's ice and fire, and uh, they will always start with a single target attack on ice and fire, and they'll do uh, multi-target attacks on some of the other elements, and you, just, you never want them on physical. They hit so hard on physical. So, yeah, it looks like it fire looks, absorber. Right, and it looks like Magus has the ruby armor on. Or red vest, sorry. Which means absorbing 100% of the fire damage incoming. Yeah, this isn't going to take much longer. Yep, they're down. And they'll live through both of the poison attacks. Oh yeah, should not be a problem. That was a very well executed fight. Very well done. And a silver stud. Is it still possible to charm a rainbow from that fight? Yes. Um, that is yet another one of those... Uh, I, we've mentioned there's a few items that are not properly randomized in the current version. Uh, that is all being fixed in the next update. But currently, uh, you know, get it in now. You can charm a rainbow from those. Enjoy that while it lasts. <laughs> Of course, that doesn't help our runners too much here. Um, only two of them picked up Chrono, and he's not in the party. Another interesting factoid. Uh, three of our runners are using the same team. Cthulhu is the only one running with Robo. Yeah, so if Robo ended up going through Ocean Palace, he'd probably have Boogie. Uh, Boogie strats are also really fantastic on the Golems. Um, they are not immune to uh, stop, and Boogie casts stop, so uh, you can just stop them and then take them down at your leisure. I yeah, wish I had known that in vanilla. Yeah, for sure. Chat is pointing out that uh, Janice doesn't have any revives. It's still possible to get through this fight without the revives. It's possible. It can get a little dicey. Uh, Magus and uh, Luca are not exactly sturdy. They dish damage, but they also don't have a lot of defense. So, uh, it can be dangerous. However, if you die to this fight, um, you wake up in the last village. So it is still possible to do some shopping after that. Or, if you beat the shell, you can hop through the portal and do some shopping as well if you're not comfortable. Right. Now, this shell has 10,000 or more hit points. Uh, it's either 10 or 12. I want to say 12. Yeah. All I remember is I wish this boss would die. So I didn't actually catch it. Um, what was in the Black Omen shop? Anything good? The chat saying oh. it was pretty lackluster, but I, I didn't actually catch what was being sold. Apparently nothing good. There's Ooh, probably uh, some amulets in there, which are normal. And then probably just nothing good. Kali blade, hyper ether, an amulet. Yeah, that's pretty bad. So it looks like obstacle is afflicting uh, with chaos today. So Ooh. this, uh, ho hopefully they can clutch it out. Hopefully. Because this would just be a little disappointing. Oh no! Yeah. One more turn! Hopefully this one does it. Go, go, Dark Bomb! Oh, oh no! Well, I mean, what this ultimately means is Janice Zeal will wake back up in the last village, 
and we'll now have to use the alternate way to get here, either the bucket or the epic. Um, you have to sit through a cutscene. It's not quite as fast, but uh, you know it, this is not a run-ending kind of event. And they'll get another chance to go do some shopping for like you know revives or other consumables that they need. It may not be run-ending, but it's not what you wanted to see. No, no, for sure. But yeah, honestly, at this point, uh, given the way that last fight went, the best option is probably to let this play out and then go do some shopping. And Phil Farron's correct. It now became a lot closer between Proc, Moon, and Janus. Yeah, yeah, that... Wow. Oh, this edge of your seat stuff. So Procky is taking down the Golem Twins now. Um, Moon still has the entire boss rush uh, to go through. Giga Mutant, Terra Mutant, and Elder Lava spawn before the three phases of Zeal. So at this point, I'd say Procky is possibly slightly ahead, though the Lavos fight is longer than Zeal and has the chance to, well, as we've seen, go south fast. I don't want to sound biased, but Moon can get through and two that gauntlet of bosses so quickly that it's it is so close. Yeah, with Flare and Dark Matter. Uh, so the mutants, of course, are only really susceptible to magic. So you need to just be able to nuke them down quickly with spells. Um, this is the team to do it with. You've got two of the strongest single, or two of the strongest magic attacks in the game in Flare and Dark Matter. So uh, it is a pretty good team for it. <laughs> I think Moon has uh, sunshades for three quarters of the amount of characters that are in the game. Uh, yeah, at this point, for sure. He's got at least two Prism Specs and at least two Sunshades. Possibly more. You stick those Prism Specs on Luca and Ayla and go for some Blaze Kicks? Yeah, that damage is no joke. And yeah, we're uh, we're getting to see that cutscene on Janus Zeal's side where they're crashing the epic into uh, the Lavos shell to take out that first form of Lavos. I've actually not seen this before, even in vanilla. Yeah, it's an interesting cutscene. Also, hey, we're getting raided. Thank you. Pirate Savvy, thank you for the raid. Welcome. Welcome, Sorry, Raiders. Big, big thanks to the Raiders. Hello, Pirate Savvy. Yay for charity. We are collecting money for the game uh, for Game Over Cancer. Uh, we are. Sorry. This is Game Over Cancer. We're collecting money for the Canadian Cancer Society. Uh, cancer is something that's affected all of us. If not directly, then definitely somebody we know. Um, unfortunately. Uh, we are very close, within $200 of reaching our next goal. Uh, hopefully everybody here can make that happen. We've got a donation link. And if you want to choose uh, which incentive to put it towards, there's one last incentive to go with the whether or not uh, they pick Mickey or Minnie Mouse for the Great Circus Mystery. So we all just got to see that fantastic cutscene on uh, Janice's screen there, uh, crashing the epic into the Lavos shell. It's a little bit of a long cutscene, and of course you don't get a save point in here, so you can't use shelters, uh, you can't save, so if you die to Lavos you then have to go through the cutscene all over again. So it's a little bit of a risky play, but uh, if you happen to die to the Lavos shell, it's still your fastest way back. Rocky, of course, also working on the Lava Shell. And Cthulhu just raising the Black Omen. I 
I want to say Moon is just finishing up the second elevator. Uh, he's making his way through, uh, trying to get to Terra Mutant. Oh, Procky uh, clutching out that Lobo shell, you know, with uh, Luca taking a dirt nap and the rest of his party low. Nicely done. Just as uh, Janice Zeal is starting their inner Lavos fight. Man, such a close race. We have two runners going into the inner Lavos fight. Moon approaching the second of three bosses in the boss rush. We had some crazy route divergence here, and we're still getting quite a show at the end. This has been a great one. So, Inner Lavos is kind of annoying. Uh, he's made up with the, the two arms and the center body. And the two arms throw boomerangs. It's just a physical attack. Uh, if you are unlucky, and they both target the same person, There's, they can't survive. Uh, unless unless their name is Robo, they're in good armor, and they have like a silver or gold earring, uh, the two boomerangs back-to-back -back will pretty much kill any character. Right, you, so, can't, you can't call that just an attack. That, that can down a character in a heartbeat. Oh yeah, especially the squishier ones. If you get here a little bit under-leveled without really good gear, uh, it, you'll actually see like Marl or Luca just get one shot. So, it, Inner Lavos can be pretty dangerous. But it looks like both of our runners are handling this pretty well. Uh, both arms just going down for Zeal and Proki taking out his second arm as well. Uh, at this point, the core goes into just a damaging phase, alternating some damaging spells, uh, as well as uh, casting Obstacle. And right, Zilfer, um, Moon does have the Lapo spawn to go through, but a couple of Blaze Kicks are going to take that down in a hurry. Oh yeah. Yeah, this really is a solid team for this. Uh, you've got really high magic power with Luca and Magus, and you've got extremely powerful physical techs with Ayla and dual tech combinations with Luca. So th this is a great team for this part. Exactly. I'd say this Giga Mutant is going to give him more of an upset than the Lavo Spawn Wall. Yeah, it depends how long it lasts. Uh, Giga or Terra Mutant has 5,000 health on the top part. Uh, the bottom part has 10,000 health, and the top can drain health from the bottom. So, honestly, one more hit uh, from either Magus or Luca at this point will finish it off. And thank you for correcting me there. The uh, Terra Mutant, Giga Mutant, same difference, right? I, I, I've always called them both Giga Mutant. Looks like Brocky uh, finished phase one of the final fight. Oh yeah, there goes Inner Lavos, now starting at Lavos core. Janice Zeal not far behind. Ooh, Moon cutting it close on shelters. He's got one left. So with this team, I'm curious to see if he decides to go with left bit strats or center bit strats. Personally, I go with center bit strats and then concentrate on the right bit. I'll overheal the left bit. That tends to be my go-to as well. Uh, depends on the party. Uh, with this party, I think that's probably what we're going to see. So, uh, in the final Lavos fight, also Proki getting the menu glitch here, uh, there is a very tight, like, three-frame window as the fight transitions, where if you press and hold the menu button, it uh, lets you into the menu. And you can kind of heal up, change equipment around. And so, it does uh, look like center bit strats. It does look like center bit strats. So, 
the center bit is where all the damaging dangerous attacks come from. Uh, yeah, Janice pulling off a nice menu glitch there as well. So, uh, the left bit's a little annoying because you can't, once the center bit's down, if the left bit is still up, you can't use full screen AoE magic attacks without taking a nasty counter. But the center bit is the one that does all of the, uh, oh, Dreamless, Grand Stone, um, all the different attacks that are really nasty, the slapping attack, that all comes from the center bit. So if you can take the center bit down, uh, then the fight really isn't as scary. Right. And for me, I'm more of a defensive player. I will barrier and shield each player those first couple of turns and then go all out as much as I can to get that center bit out and then start work on the right bit. Yeah, that's uh, similar to the strat I typically use. Very, very solid way to do it. Uh, depending, if you have a very heavy physical attack party, sometimes it's easier to take out the uh, the left bit though, because you can take it down in two turns, and then you can focus on the big AOE attacks to try and take out the center and the right at the same time. Oh yes, and it does look like left bit stretch for Janus. Yeah, getting to see uh, a few different techniques today. We have different divergences, different end games, and different strats. Wow. And thanks to Cthulhu, different parties. Exactly. Honestly, it is kind of funny that most of the runners have just stayed with the first three they got. Uh, it was a Magus Ayla starting seed with Luca at Cathedral, and, you know, three of the four runners are just like, you know what? I'm okay with this. And I am usually the same way, and, but personally, Magus, I usually kick him out of the party because he tends to lag out come into the game. He leans out to where he won't do as much damage, Yeah, as far he, as I'm uh, concerned. It, it's true. So Magus, because of his lack of synergy with other characters, tends to drop off sort of towards the late game. Uh, oops, seeing Procky eat a counter-attack here. Down goes Luca. That's what oh, I was talking ouch. about with uh, a full-screen AoE with both the left and right bit up will hurt. Um, so Tech Randomizer is actually kind of the reason that Magus has fallen a little bit out of favor. So back when you just had vanilla techs, uh, Magus had really strong starting damage and was usually the first one you got AoE abilities with. So you keep him around a lot longer. With tech rando and people getting AOE abilities much and much much earlier, um, it's just not. He's not quite as big of a deal. Okay, so it's coming down to Prake, Janus, and Moon. Moon's coming into the mammoth machine fight, which goes down in probably two hits, and he'll go into yep. the Zeal two fight. The transition between the Mammoth Machine and the ZL2 fight is actually pretty long. And I think that's the only thing oh, that will hold him back from the two that's levels. That's GG core for Procky. All right, GG Procky. Oh, we're seeing a Dreamless over on Janice's side. I'm thinking he's probably going to lose Ayla and Magus. Luca may survive it. Oh. Janice's side. I'm thinking he's probably going to lose Ayla and Magus. Luca may survive it. That hurt. Lavos, Lavos just does that sometimes. That's amazing. He was just behind Janus until that Lavos won fight. Yeah. Oh, this is. This what has been a come from behind. Race. Yeah, center bit strats are incredibly powerful if you have the right team. Um, just because it gets rid of the possibility of, say, Dreamless, or, oh, here comes another big hit. Hopefully, hopefully oh. they can survive it. Oh, no! Oh. Ooh, that was brutal. 
They were trying so hard to. Yeah, they were. That's just oh, so close. So that actually puts Moon Blizzard into second. I mean, there were some that would argue that we are currently watching the cutscene for the true ending, uh, and the future refused to change. Okay. I agree. <laughs> So Zeal 2 is kind of interesting. Zeal 2 has 20,000 health. Uh, you do not attack the hands. The hands have, like, perfect defense just about. Uh, and they will counterattack with a move that either brings you to one health or drains all your MP. So you want to get Zeal 2 down uh, to half health before she casts Hexagon Mist. If you can do that, she'll cast Halation, which we just saw on the screen here. Uh, yeah, nice timing for Omega Elixir. And nice um, timing for that White Vest. Perfect! Yeah, yeah, for sure. A little early on the Mega Elixir, he got hit with the MP Drain, but eh, not a big deal. But then, uh... Oh wait, is Janus back in... Ocean Palace? Oh, Janus didn't save, oh no! Oh no! Oh, that's so brutal. Uh, anyway, if you can get Zeal down to half health before she casts Hexagon Mist, you sort of like reset the fight script, and she like doesn't cast Hexagon Mist for a lot longer. Uh, and if you have enough health or enough damage to get her down to half before she casts it, you probably have enough damage to finish the fight before she gets off her next cast. And Hexagon Mist is, of course, her most damaging spell. So yeah, that's GG doing... for Moon. And doing nearly 5,000 damage per blaze kick. Moon Blizzard takes down Zeal 2. Yeah, with that setup, blaze kick with double prism specs, I mean, that team is a monster. So yeah, we have uh, Moon Blizzard coming in second. With a 145, solid time. Are we going to bring in Procky for an interview here? Uh, uh, he's already in the channel. You would just have to unmute himself. So if you'd like to join oh, us, oh hi guys, see he's listening in. Hey, hey, hey Brock, 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 GG. Hey. Good game, man. Yeah, what a seed, what a seed. I, uh, I thought it would be even faster based on the fact that the gate key was the first item, and I thought that was a good sign. And then it turned into like a lot of fetching. So I can't believe. Oh. Yeah, so I'll have a couple questions, but. Uh, um, I'm interested in, in Moon's divergent path there. So, yeah, Moon um, didn't pick up Robo, so he never did Desert to get the Dreamstone. Ended up getting Clone in Genodome. Ah, um, okay. So mm. Moon actually entered Black Omen after uh, you were in Ocean Palace because of that, the, the length of the Genodome check, and of course Moon being an absolute beast and skipping like every fight in Omen. Um, now, the really the heartbreaking part here is that Janus Zeal was actually the first player to go mode, uh, but took a nasty death to the Lavos shell, did the cutscene uh, to then crash oh. the epic into the shell, and took a death. You were both fighting Lavos core simultaneously. Oh my. Uh, when they took a death to uh, the core. So it, this was a really edgier seat race. It was crazy to watch. So much back and forth. I'm very much looking forward to watching the replay of this because, yeah, we're all uh, very close to each other. You don't always see that, so... Yeah, it was an amazing race. Uh, we've still got Cthulhu going. We've got Janus going up to Lavos 1 right now. So uh, if we could get Moon pulled back into uh, this channel, he had accidentally left the channel and can't get back in. There we go. And GG Moon. Yeah, GG Moon. GG Moon. Absolutely. GG, Moon. That race was crazy. Yeah, really, that was fun to watch. Thank you uh, for
for for putting that on. That has to be one of the coolest. Ways hello, to end hello. It. Oh, hey, Moon. There you are. Hello. Congrats, hello. Uh, wow, this seed. <laughs> Okay, my takeout from this seed is never skip cathedral again. <laughs> oh, I did the same thing. <laughs> you did? Oh my, I never skip cathedral. And then there was this like discussion of the Discord. And, no, skipping cathedral is like deep play. And I'm like, okay, let's try this. <laughs> and no. <laughs> yeah, let's I ended, not do that again. I ended up going back to cathedral really late to get Robo. I By then I knew he had to be there. I checked everywhere else and... Uh, so I ended up getting a different go mode than you, a different path. Yeah. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm che checking the uh, stream right now, and I can see your ending is different than mine. So yeah. we have we have two runners win the levels and two is black women. So that's isn't interesting. That, isn't that so cool? Yeah, yeah it is. Enough. It is amazing. There's a nice this... symmetry to the to the restream where both runners on the left ended up going with the uh, lavos. Fight, and the two runners on ah. the right are going for the zeal and yeah it's fun how that happened yeah i, th I think my, my mistake was like uh doing a lot of faster checks and then they turned out to be like nothing for me and for a moment i i thought of doing genodome very early on but then i didn't and i think that cost me it was like three minutes that was so close I, mean, oh. I was trying to rush everything Ouch. for Dinodom. I was like rushing, r running away from fights that I always get. And then. Oh, wasn't. Quite and Janice, uh, Janice taking another reset there at uh, Inner Lavos. Yeah. yeah. Right. And Cthulhu, uh, Ale is down. So we're, we're looking at hopefully taking down the mutant here pretty quick. Yeah, Ayla, I think, is a little less important for this particular fight due to her lack of magic damage, but still but never that tailspin, fun. But that Tailspin can still do good damage. Yeah, Tailspin can chip away, and and it adds up. It definitely helps. Um, that's for sure. You never like to see one of your people taking a dirt nap during a boss fight. And he made it through? Yeah. So this one... Uh, moon was absolutely crazy there was so much back and forth so when we had the early pendant and the early gate key uh you know gate key was uh snail stop i think and the pendant came from was it frog's burrow so you got the uh metal from the tool or metal from the carpenter's tools into the pendant at burrow this whole seed just opened wide up and everyone started taking roots all over the place it wasn't uncommon to have you know four different runners each in a different time period all at the same time so really that really was, fun yeah to yeah that must have been fun After, to commentate oh yeah, when i saw like crazy. we had gate key and pendant I, I, I mean right from the start i was like wow see this is this, this is so open it's so open i mean whoever gets the i mean finds the clone and trigger uh, uh the go mode for lava first they will be way ahead like, and I kept like, I got like something, stuff like, oh, a piece of sword, like the jerky, and I was like, oh no, Dance Claw was nothing. <laughs> what was your route I... again, uh, Brocky? Hmm. So I went, I used the gate key quite early, um, just to check end of time, just so that I had it and prehistory. Okay. And then I kind of went back and started doing. Things like, uh, I think I did Hecram pretty early. Uh, I collected Luca from Cathedral. Then I taught her magic. Then I started doing Hecran. And like me, I guess. There. And yeah. And then once I had the pendant, uh, uh, well, actually, I went to the future right after Hecran um, and just started doing checks. Yeah, I was considering doing that Geno Dome, but boy, it does take a long time. And uh, But I ended up probably doing more checks in the end than you did. I think the only reason I didn't do Genodome very early on because I, I I didn't have any kind of MP like Silver Stud, Gold Stud, and Magus didn't uh, didn't know uh, Dark Dark Mist yet, so I was kind of not going to rely on Young Flare, you know. So I... yeah, another another thing I did that I, I I tried to play it kind of safe. So when I was grinding in Ocean Palace, like I grinded up to like level thirty. So that it could be 33, 34 for Lavos. I see. Uh, 
I think Janice probably beat me to Lavos, but is now struggling, and that could be a factor. Yeah, so what ended up happening, uh, Janice got go mode first. Um, oh. Went through Ocean Palace, but took a death to Lavos Shell, um, came back using the cutscene, and... Uh, Procky, you and Janice were fighting Inner Lavos at the same exact time. Uh, wow. You, you got to core slightly ahead. I mean, just a few seconds. And then Janice took a, a nasty combo and died, but hadn't saved. So Janice ended up back in Ocean oh. Palace again before the shell fight. Um, so Janice has been having a really rough time of Lavos. Lavos has not been kind. <laughs> And that just happens one, sometimes. One thing I got in this run that I don't remember getting was like, uh, Zeo, she didn't cast Halation. I could kill her before her Halation. I don't know how that happened. Uh, no, <laughs> she, she cast it. I thought you, you used a... No, no, uh, Zeo 1, Zeo 1. Oh, Zeo 1, yeah, uh, you... She didn't. You, uh... I did Blaze Kick like... and Dark Mist. Your blaze kicks were hitting for like 4,600. That was kind of yeah. terrifying. Um, <laughs> Did that mean so, you found two prism specs? Yeah, I mean, two prism specs and three two. sunshade. Uh, I was like, wow. okay. <laughs> I had one prism specs. a lot of glasses. <laughs> from Aerodome? Yeah. Yeah, I got, yeah, that's right. From Aerodome, I got one prism, and then I had one sunshade from, I think, Yakra dropped it. Mm hmm. And yeah. So that's what I oh, had. Oh, you did? But Yakra? Oh. I ended up doing Yakra to get Robo, which is where I found the Dreamstone at the desert. And uh, yeah, so I had Sunshades on. I was swapping between Ayla and Luca for the most part with Sunshades and Prism Specs and doing about oh, 4,000 okay. 4, with okay. my base kick. Nice, nice, nice. So, what was up. your final team? Um, it was uh, Ayla, Luca, and Magus. Okay, like me, yeah. Okay. And Janice has oh, they the are same really team good. Too. Yeah, Cthulhu's the only one who has gone with a different team so far. Uh, he's actually just working his way through Terra Mutant now. Yeah, I knew I wouldn't have healing with this team, so I really bought a lot of Lapises. <laughs> I, I bought 15. Ooh, really? Wow. wow. I am trying to... I mean, I, I usually don't buy Lapises because I think they're kind of expensive, but when I saw that very uh, underwhelming new shop, I was like, okay... I can't even spend my money. Oh, I know. There was nothing there, right? Full ethers and an amulet. I think that was basically it. Yeah. Both new shops were incredibly disappointing today. Uh, the the one in Omen was like uh, an amulet, a full ether, and a Kali blade. Oh. <laughs> that was very disappointing. <laughs> I do want to say thank you to both of you for an amazing race. It's been great commentating for the both of you and for both of the other racers it has been an amazing yeah, GG, GG Pro Aki for the win this was amazing uh, oh, really GG. Enjoyed playing. yeah and thank thank you uh angrel and uh silver neo for stepping up and doing commentary because uh it was looking a little sketchy until the last minute there i didn't know if we had anyone and i think streiser and malcrio said we'll do it and i thought oh geez they got enough on their plates we, we better get <laughs> someone in here so see that would yeah. have been entertaining too because i mean I believe. Thank you, Angro. I think and thank they, you, Silver Neo. I think Mal and Streiser did our commentary a, a year ago when we did uh, the spring uh, Game Over Cancer in 2020. And uh, I, I always love doing this uh, this marathon. And yeah, it was a pleasure. And we'll see you again, I'm sure, in the next uh, the next Game Over Cancer. Oh, well, we love having. Yeah, it was a pleasure to be part of it. Thank you for the opportunity to play. Yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic cause, and it, we're glad to have people from all around the world helping us. And Absolutely. And time, and, and they're in help in any way, and just the, just putting their eyes on us is is more than enough. It's it's wonderful to see how people can bring themselves together for for a cause. Oh and yeah, it, great great games for a great cause. It it looks to me like maybe. Um, well, maybe the record was broken earlier, but I, I don't think I've seen uh, over five thousand dollars raised for Game Over Cancer. So good job for with for everyone who donated and 
That's amazing. It's it, it's true. Uh, I believe our our highest uh, our highest total for for one event before was four <coughs> uh, four thousand four hundred ish uh, U.S. So we've blown that out of the water, and I would love to set the bar even further for the next uh, for the next event. So we're gonna keep keep chasing keep chasing those goal posts. Absolutely. We should easily be able to get 5,500 tonight and maybe even a little further. So as long as people keep donating, I know I'm going to probably put another one in after this and we still have some great runs coming up. So yeah, thanks again, everyone. Um, maybe I'll, I'll be quiet now and just watch the rest of this race play out. Yeah, we're coming down towards the end. Um, you know, Janice back at Lavos core I expect them to have this fight down hopefully soon hopefully Lavos actually gives them a break this time Ouch. oh and Not Luca like goes that. down <laughs> please no commentators Kurt oh no oh oh no this is gonna hurt oh gosh oh. You hate to see that. So now for those at home, what caused those counters? So if you use a full screen magic attack uh, with no center bit up that hits both the left and the right, they will counter attack with an X strike style counter attack that hits like a truck. Uh, you were seeing there was hitting for five, 600 damage a hit. So uh, once you get that center bit down, you typically want to take it down with a single target attack, or you want your character that casts the ability to be very high health, very high armor, preferably with a shield to uh, cut that damage down. So you'll see sometimes there are strats where uh, Antipode 3, the combination of Ice 2 and Flare from Luca and Marl, is an absolutely devastating dual tech. Uh, and you'll see sometimes uh, runners will uh, use a gold earring on one of the two to boost up their health or use uh, shields to increase their, their physical damage resistance. And they will spam Antipode, t Antipode 3, hit the whole screen, just eat the counter, and then use their third character to then use a full tonic and bring their, their person who got countered back to full health. Right, uh, and you only got to keep in mind the speed penalty that happens from the dual tech. Anytime Luca is involved in a dual tech, she takes the speed penalty. Yeah, if not all, at least most of them for sure. Um, that said, though, if you're running with that team, you're also typically running haste, and the you know 5,000 damage you can pull out of an Antipode 3 with your hasted characters is still pretty worth it. Absolutely. We got Cthulhu going through level spawn. And we still have Janus at Lavos core. Yeah, it looks like Janus was able to recover. That was a nice recovery after a, what looked pretty devastating there. So we're still on track. Here come the blaze kicks. Uh, 20,000 health on the right bit. It looks like Magus may just be uh, relegated to consumable throwing at this point. Right, and it looks like Janus has switched over to the right bit strats. Oh, no, we're getting some dark bombs in there. Very nice. So Magus is not the best for this fight. Um, most of his power comes from his full screen high powered shadow attacks. Uh, so about the best you can do here is dark bomb. But even throwing a dark bomb is still you know, six, seven hundred damage. Uh, it, it adds up. Right, and it's a great additive to a blaze kick. For sure. Now here, this is where you can pour in some damage with Magus. Uh, with the Lavos, with all three bits up, you're free to do your full screen magic attacks. So you can get Dark Matters. Uh, 
in to supplement that blaze kick damage until the right bit turns its defense back on. But as you see, it's still only about 1800 damage. And if he takes that right bit down, oh, it's just take the rest of them. All right, GG. Fantastic. I wasn't aware that taking out the right bit would take out the center bit as well. Yeah, once that right bit goes down, that's that's the end. I Janus, good game, right GG. What are your thoughts? Yeah, once that oh, right bit goes Lavos down, is that's, annoying. that's the end. Just decide you die. Janus, <laughs> oh, that, good that game. was absolutely heartbreaking to watch there. You were actually the first in go mode and the first one to the shell just slightly ahead of Procky. Um, and Lavos just decided it was your time, and it it was painful, but good job, good perseverance, and way to recover. Yeah, yeah. That's so the what, only thing you can do. <laughs> so, what were your thoughts as you were getting key items along the way here? Uh, I was really hoping for the clone. Um, it would have been nice to have a early go mode, but uh, do you want to know where that was? Was it at Geno Dome? It was at Geno Dome. Yeah, had a feeling. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we ended up uh, opted uh, following that that route. Yeah, you and Paraki both went Ocean Palace. Uh, Moon and Cthulhu ended up doing Geno Dome and went through the the Omen route. Okay. Yeah, it's like I avoided Geno Dome because it's such a long check, and I had the desert first, I think it was. So. But the thing is, you were the first one to get Go Mode. Do you think Geno Dome would have helped you in any way? Uh, if I would have committed to that first, because um, I think I still ended up having to go do Reptite Layer. So if I would have just committed yeah. to Geno Dome, I probably would have still gotten go mode at around, around the same time. I think you would have had more levels and had an easier time at the end if you had a if you if you had a gun that way. Yeah, I mean you also don't need um nearly as much of levels for Zeal 2 than you do Lavos, and the fight with her is a lot less like chaotic. <laughs> Yeah, she runs on a much more set script, whereas Lavos, you know, RNG can just mess you over pretty bad. And we have Cthulhu coming up to Zeal 2 right now. Yeah, we got to see a lot of fun stuff, though. So, uh, like, Janice, you went through the Ocean Palace, of course, along with Paraki, but you also got to show us that, uh, that cutscene crashing the epic into the shell. Um, like we've seen two different go modes. We've seen, you know, that cutscene where you can, uh, if you take the death to the shell, you can go like restock on items and then get the cutscene. It's, we've really gotten to showcase a lot of different facets of this randomizer today. So, you know, thank you very much for, uh, taking part in this. It has been a blast. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Absolutely. It's been great commentating. Uh, thank you for an amazing race. And it looks like we are nearly drawing to a close here. Uh, Cthulhu is working on Zeal 2 now. And of course, with Blaze Kicks and Uzi Punches, I don't think uh, Zeal's going to be lasting too long. No, that's a pretty good go-to right there. So the one uh, one big benefit of Cthulhu going with Robo for his party is he's got that heal beam. Uh, our other runners were running with higher damage compositions, but less uh, survivability. In the you know Robo is pretty tanky, and he's got some full party heals that can help out. Right, I tend to shy away from not being able to AOE heal real good. That you don't like to see, though. He took a dark gear followed by a... Uh... 
one of the I think finger zap attacks. Yep, the yeah. lightning. Oh, oh and here's no. a dark gear. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, that could be oh, never mind. Well, there's that heal on Ayla. <laughs> but there's the dirt and hep on Robo. Yeah, he uh he was planning ahead for this and put on some blue mails. So Hexagon Mist is probably one of the most damaging boss attacks in the game, you know, up there with uh, Dreamless or Grand Stone for sure. Uh, it hits very, very hard, but you can completely mitigate it with a blue mail. No, oh, and here comes the Halation. Now the hope is he picked up that Mega Elixir so he can use one to revive Robo, one to throw the Mega. Oh no. Okay, okay, okay. That's all good. That's just an MP drain. Yeah, now we can throw the Mega Elixir and we're back in business. That's his last Mega Elixir though. He's got to take him down. Should be okay. At this point, Zeal's over halfway dead. Uh, we can get a couple of Blaze Kicks in, about 4k each. Maybe throw an Uzi punch, just, you know, just to round things out a bit. It looks like he's down to one revive as well. Uh, he needs to play it careful. <laughs> right. This one's touchy. So Zeal is more predictable than Lavos and doesn't deal quite the same level of just random spike damage. But Zeal can still hit you pretty hard, so if you're not uh you know not geared quite right for it or you can't put out quite enough damage to get ahead of the hexagon mists. Oh, and uh, he's trying to menu tap some heal beams there. Or I would have thought. Uh was that an Uzi punch? Oh, it's a blaze oh. kick. And, and he gets it. You must have been counting. And oh, look, there's the moon armor. <laughs> oh, that'll come in handy. That's exactly for what you want to see on a Zeal 2 kill. Wow. Yeah, GG Cthulhu. That was, that was good. And a 210. That's also pretty solid time. Absolutely. Is it a new PB there, Cthulhu? I think that might actually be. I think uh, he may still have himself uh, set so he can't hear us here in Discord. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, Cthulhu. GG. So is that a PB? That is a PB. Congrats. Congrats. Outstanding. Congratulations. Oh, there were some close fights there. <laughs> that yeah, Zeal that... 2, I was like, I just have to go for it. I'm so close. <laughs> yeah, we saw that at the end. So were you counting that, or were you just kind of YOLOing that last blaze kick? I... Um, I didn't have an exact count, but I knew I had done at least 15k or 16k. I knew I was in that ballpark, and I knew each blaze kick was doing 4k. So I was mashing B and A out of the menu, trying to catch the instant that Luca was up. But if he would have gotten an attack, or if she would have gotten an attack off, I, that would have been bad. <laughs> yeah, we we saw so that, that menu last attack. Threat was a was an absolute sweat yeah it it was rough and then when i wiped when i wiped it's because i thought there was uh in the fight before that i think i wiped to uh elder lava spawn only because for some reason i thought there was a save point right before that so i only healed up enough to get there and then like the fight started i'm like oh i didn't if like fill up my magic this is going to be bad. <laughs> yeah. So I should have just reset right there. But that was that was a good run. I'm very happy with that. Yeah, that was fantastic. Uh, we had, you know, 
two runners went Ocean Palace go mode. Uh, you and Moon both went uh, Black Omen go mode. So it was lots of divergent routes, lots going on. That was a real fun one to commentate. Thank you. You you all put on a great <laughs> race. Well, I figured <laughs> that Moon did Geno before me because I've watched enough of Moon's runs that I figured he had done that before. Um, and I I got uh, Lavos go mode, and I was like, I think I'm going to take the chance on Geno Dome. It's going to take about the same amount as Tyranno, and if I'm right, I think it'll save me time overall, but I don't know. So I, I went for it, and then I was pretty happy that I did. Yeah, we weren't sure. We were talking a little about that when we saw you get the Ocean Palace go mode and then continue to do Geno. Just thinking... You know, are you going there for maybe some conveyor belt levels before you fight the Tyranno? Were you fishing for a different go mode? Um, so Definitely I guess that answers fishing. the question. <laughs> yeah. So, so I've been playing Lost Worlds Plus, which is a different category. And in it, you have to go Black Omen the first time through, and then you New Game Plus and do the Lavos route. Um, right. And in that, uh, I'm I'm not used to doing Lavos at low lower levels anymore. So I was like, all right, I'm way more confident going Black Omen. I'm going to give it one more check. And if it's not there, then I'll head straight to Tyranno. But I, sh- oh, I almost off. did it. I almost did it right after Son of Sun. And then I remembered Thomas Pop. And I was like, well, I don't know that anyone else is going to like rush off to Thomas Pop. But that didn't really pay off because I think it was jerky. <laughs> yeah, that was your jerky. Which was fine. It got me... Uh, not a vigil hat. It got me something that was okay. And then I pulled a vigil hat somewhere and I was super happy about that. <laughs> I had a lot of status mm-hmm. protection. That helps. Yeah. For, uh, sure. I know Terra Mutant can get a little nasty with his status effects. Well, and I did a warm up run yesterday and Terra Mutant wiped me four times. So I was Oof. a little nervous, <laughs> but I was glad that everything went more or less smoothly. So you know, I do have a question, if if you don't mind. Uh, all of the other runners ended up going with Magus, Ayla, and Luca as their party. You are the only one who included Robo. So what what was your uh, process of thought when uh, when you made that decision? Yeah, so I hate starting with Magus because it's. It's, you know, a dungeon and a half or two dungeons before you get your first tech. And I knew the first tech was Magic Wall. And uh, I just thought with Robo, I get an AoE heal and I get amazing single target damage, which is good if I'm going to go Black Omen. So I was kind of planning and hoping for Black Omen because I got that early uh, C trigger. I don't remember quite where I got that. Um, but I got that early enough that um, I was like, I really want to have great single target damage. And then when uh, when I found Luca, I was like, well, she's definitely going in. Ayla's not going anywhere because they all had OK techs at the start, but they all got their good stuff pretty early. I could have used double V-bomb a little earlier. Um, I didn't get that until deep into the Omen. And by then it wasn't really useful to me anymore. Yeah, I think you got that when you beat Terra Mutant, which is yeah. where you would have wanted to use it. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I, I like Robo, and I like having the AoE heal to fall back on. So I I was like, this is a safer bet for me. And I don't, I'm not a big Magus fan in general. I like Magus if you get him at Cathedral or right after Cathedral, because if he starts with any AoE, That'll get you through Hecarim Cave. Um, but outside of that, usually Magus doesn't stay in my party after Hecarim Cave. Now, I, uh, I I just want to take a quick moment to interrupt here and offer a big thanks to Procky coming through with his word of saying that he was going to throw a few dollars our way, donating a massive $80 Canadian, saying... And you're officially allowed to roll seeds for the community again. So GG racers, GG staff, and GG donors. <laughs> and, and GG thank you, Brocky. Brocky. I may allow you to roll a seed for me sometime in the future. Yes, I guess, redemption. redemption. I guess this delete <laughs> me out. 
<laughs> in fact, you can roll me a seed and I will raise silver Neo at it anytime. <laughs> oh. I'll throw oh. the gauntlet down. Yeah, the Shot. gauntlet has been thrown. Shot <laughs> fired. Let's do this. <laughs> And I'll even let you choose the category, brother. Except Chrono Sanity. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It'd be normal. It'd be normal. Streiser's <laughs> involved, too. It's going to be you, me, and Streiser. Oh, yeah. No, that'd be great. That'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm down any time. So I appreciate you guys letting me be part of, part of the event, because this was a blast. We appreciate you being part of it. I so enjoyed commentating. It's an amazing experience. Thank you so much, man. No problem. I'll let you guys take it from here. Yeah, and also a uh, thank you to uh, Streiser and you know Game Over Cancer, all the volunteers for putting this on. This really was a lot of fun. And thank you all for joining us and offering your time to help us uh, say, raise money for this wonderful cause.